So it's actually quite instructive to see what happens to the to our large signal model or our transistor model uh, when we enter the saturation region, right? So when we are in the active region, we have this diode and we have this current source, the controlled uh, current source that was controlled by the voltage of the diode, right? And this, this diode here was actually reverse bias. So we had a voltage here at the base that was smaller, so VB was smaller than VC. So this diode pretty much was an open circuit, right? It was a reverse bias diode. Now, as I start to decrease, let's say VB is fixed, say my VB is 0 0.8, and let's say VE is ground, right? As I start to decrease VC, let's say it, it was one volt first, then it goes to 0.8 and then 0 0.6, 0 0.4, and it just basically, I, I decrease it little by little, right? What happens is that initially the diode, the, this diode that I'm talking about was reverse bias, then it goes to equilibrium. Then once I start to make the collector voltage smaller than 0 0.8, it starts to go to the uh, forward bias and the more forward the, the more I go to the forward bias from the KCL perspective You can see that well the current that I have here this IS1 is the addition of the current of this diode in the forward bias and the collector current Right, so I in a sense I can say that I see the collector current is really IS1 exponential of VBE over VT and on the other hand, it, this is minus IS2 exponential of VBE, or sorry, uh, this is not uh, VBE, it's VBC. So this is a typo actually from the textbook. So VBC over VT. Okay, so since I kept the BE constant, this term is always constant but i can see that as i decrease the collector voltage the the current through this diode this diode the the base collector diode becomes more and more uh forward biased or stronger and stronger in the forward bias region therefore this current is going to increase okay what's the outcome of that for the collector current well the collector current is is gonna uh, is going to become smaller and smaller that's why like we said that beta is uh, like it, it is almost feels like that the beta became smaller in reality the collector current is not that nice exponential current that we had before it's just well initially it's just a little bit smaller than that and as this term becomes bigger and bigger it becomes smaller and smaller and at some point as you can see here it reaches zero right so when we are in the forward active region when everything was good and nice. Remember, we had nice flat lines representing our uh, voltage controlled current source. Again, forget about early effect and all those kind of things, right? For now, just focus on the uh, active versus saturation. Early effect could be uh, happening for both of them, by the way. Now, we had these nice current sources, flat lines and everything, right? But then once I started going to, like once I decreased the collector emitter voltage, Beyond a certain point shown here, it looks like that my current starts to decrease very quickly, right? And that's the effect of this term uh, becoming bigger and bigger, which is because this diode here is, uh, is biased more and more in the forward region, okay? Now, uh, if I continue with this and I fully turn on this diode, uh, it turns out that I can actually make my collector current equal to zero, as you can see here. So a couple of points that needs to be mentioned here is that number one is the term saturation. Where does it come from, right? Why do we call it saturation? So if you look at this curve again, this plot again, uh, we know that these three different lines are coming from three different v BE values, right? So this is like VBE1, and this is a base emitter voltage that is bigger than VBE1, and well, VBE3 is the greatest, right? So if I increase, the only way to increase the collector current when, when I'm in the active region is to increase the base emitter voltage, right? Uh, 
what happens is that when you go to the active to the saturation region you can see that these these curves are actually becoming closer and closer to each other and then they actually become equal when you reach zero right so what the what what it means is that once you actually get to the saturation region and as you go deeper and deeper into the saturation region uh, what happens is that increasing the base current in this region of operation leads to little to no change in the collector current. And that's why we say the transistor is saturated. So like once you actually get to like this region with, where you are deep in saturation, you can see that it doesn't really matter if you actually change the VBE. There's a very little change in the IC that you will actually experience by changing the base emitter voltage because uh, the majority of the current that is generated by this is actually absorbed by that. So none of it is actually reaching the collector. Okay. The the last thing that I want to mention about the saturation region is that for every transistor there is something called VCE sat. So the collector emitter voltage uh, of saturation, which well, more or less is around 200 millivolts. Okay. That under this condition the transistor bears no resemblance to a controlled current source. And you can almost model it as shown in this picture here, right? So like basically what happens is that imagine that the, both diodes are fully turned on. And let's say that the IS of the two diodes are different enough that one of them only, like when, when it's fully on, it's basically, for example, the base emitter needs 0.8 volts to turn on fully. And then the base collector needs, let's say 0.6 volts, right? just because of the physical dimensions and the doping levels, right? Uh, in reality, what happens is that the collector emitter, between the collector and emitter, you actually have a fixed voltage. Where does this 200 millivolts come from? Well, I know that the base is actually, because the transistor is on, the base is 800 millivolts, give or take, higher than the emitter. And I know that the base is also, because of this diode, 600 millivolts, higher than collector. So effectively, by just doing this simple math, I can see that the collector is 200 millivolts greater than emitter, right? So my transistor in the saturation is not really the transistor that I knew one day, right? It's not the good old transistor that I, that I liked that was a voltage controlled current source and I could do amplifications with it. It's just basically, it's a weird thing that I know some information about it. What are those information? So if in saturation, so if I actually realize somehow, and we're going to talk about somehow, and how, how do we realize that in, in, a, in a few slides. If I realize that I am in saturation, then I can say that my VC, and I mean deep in saturation, not shallow saturation. I'm not talking about like this region here, which is well entering the saturation. I'm talking about deep in saturation. I can say that my VCE is more or less 200 millivolts and I cannot and well let's say I, what I can say and then I'm going to say what I cannot say about my transistor and the other thing I can say is that KCL still holds so IE is equal to IC plus IB okay what I can't say is IC is equal to IS e to the power of VBE over VT. I cannot say IC is equal to beta IB or IE is equal to beta plus one IB. Or any other well equation that you know that is based on beta or alpha. So none of these are actually valid anymore. These are the only two equations that I, the only two uh, kind of piece of information that I have when I know my transistor is in saturation. Okay, uh, so I know that KCL still holds. KCL always always holds for any circuit. So I know that IE is equal to the addition of IC plus IV because I can write KCL at this on, on at this node. But at the same time. Uh, I know that IC and IB don't have that old relationship that they had, that one of them was 100 times bigger than the other one. They might actually become, well, it's, 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 it rarely even happens that they, they're in that order, but they, 
like I can imagine that they might actually even become equal or like even the base current being greater than collector current. There's no, uh, there's absolutely no rule that you can actually apply uh, that, that tells you what is the relationship between IP and IC unless it's given or you actually calculate them using KVL and KCL um, written on the rest of the circuit. So based on the transistor, you cannot really tell anything about them or about the relationship. Okay. Now, uh, when I say if in saturation, I mean that, let's say that, well, you do calculate your, like you assume your transistor is in the active region, and then you start doing the DC analysis based on the assumption that you're in the active region. And then in your analysis, you reach to the point that you realize, oh, my V collector is, for example, you do the math, and then you realize that my V collector is uh, 600 millivolts. And my V emitter is 500 millivolts. What does that mean? That means that V collector emitter is less than 0.2 volts. That was the border for saturation, right? Once you actually get to this point, then you know that, well, your assumption of being in the active region, so with the assumption of active region and using all those equations, you got to the point that VC is actually less than 0.2. So it means that your assumption of being in the active region was wrong. You have to kind of like erase everything that you have done or everything that you have calculated about the voltages and currents of your transistor. Assume that you're in the saturation. Start with the assumption that you know the collector emitter voltage being 200 millivolts. You know that the base emitter voltage is 700 or 800 millivolts, whatever is given. And then from there, you can actually start doing the math, doing the circuit analysis again. Okay, so you have to start over. We're going to see examples of that uh, later.